Like, I've had a few crazy Dolan rants over the years, you and I have been together, but that's mm-hmm. really it. This year's a little different. I, I, I always get my, you know, Randall stuff in, that thing, my, the tweet I had with Randall and Bosch, that took off. Dwayne Wade said what he said about me, and, you know, we were able to inject that into the conversation. But outside of that, uh, outside of this year, it has been ignoring uh, a, a team that, quite frankly, deserved to be ignored. <laughs> and what's happened now, and what's happened very, very quickly, to my surprise, I knew they play harder. Yeah. But all out of nowhere, the Knicks finally have a head coach. They have a superstar. And you can debate whether or not you think Randall's a superstar. I'm calling him a superstar at this point. They have a blossoming star in Barrett, who is a young beast. They've got a ton of draft equity. They've got multiple first-round picks, which means they could do things. Maybe not. I'm not saying you're going to find your star in the draft, but you could take those those picks and package them and get a player who might want out elsewhere. And I read something over the weekend that maybe De'Aaron Fox could be uh, gracing the skids for a little Sacramento departure, destination the Garden. They had a huge wick, uh, victory uh, yesterday against I the Mavericks. That. I know, I saw that. Huge. And yeah, they were Porzingis like, got roasted. Yeah, I mean, he was Porzingis has been terrible this year, BT. I hate to say it. He just, I don't no, know. No, say it. I don't care. Good. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, exactly. You love this. Cause he, just, you, he, he defected on you. Um, but they were up by 22 at that point. I mean, if it not for the heroics of Luka, who was, I want to say, like, like nine of or maybe even 10 of like 13 in the fourth scored like 24 points in the fourth period yeah they get blown out by sacramento yeah yeah no i know and De'Aaron fox was a big part of that that's why you bring that up he's a good player he's a really really good player on a really really not good team yeah uh which means that you know behind the scenes you get a little flex get me out of here i'm not going to resign if a Mm -hmm. team believes you're not going to resign what happens martin nba bank trade dealt yeah so let me play something because the thing that I tried to stress to everybody last week, uh, um, as I, I, r- I was running through some facts last week, we were, Knicks, I believe they had maybe won their fourth straight at this point. Now it's six straight. And by the way, Derek Rose, what an alert play. Very easily could have shot that layup, go for the tie. Last second, sees Bullock in the corner. Great dish, bangs it, go to overtime, yeah. run him out of the gym. It's an incredible yeah. win, right? Yeah, by the way, this was uh, Lonzo Ball's gross, like, gross miscalculation. Yes, Lonzo has the wing over there. Um, and he sunk in. On, they're up by three, by the up way. Up by three. The Pelicans are up by three. Lonzo cheats to help against Derrick Rowe do, for a layup with 4.2 seconds left, and instead he kicks it out to the corner, and the three-point, obviously tied, goes overtime, and the next dominated uh, in the extra period. Yeah, and Derrick Rose can still play, by the way. He is yeah. still not quite as bouncy as he was, obviously, multiple knee surgeries. Derrick Rose... Uh, you know, has has a lot of game and has a real passion. And he knows Thibodeau. They've worked together well. So you look at the Knicks and, you know, some of the stats I threw out last week that still apply. First defense, first in field goal percentage allowed, first in three-point percentage allowed, um, first in um, – um, first in third in overall defensive deficiency. They're one of a handful of teams that have given up fewer than 100 points 19 times. Like, the defensive numbers are there. But now you're starting to see – and he's starting to hear, and I want to play this from Zion, because this was my ultimate point last week. I said, you might not recognize it yet, all right, but I know Dolan still owns the team. We own, He has not sold the team. Yeah. So you want to tell me that that dynamic has not fully changed? You're, you're literally right. But the difference now is that there are multiple buffers in between, and Dolan's always been hand-off. He's just been a bit buffoonish, but he's never been, like, day-to-day engaged like Steinbrenner at, at <laughs> all. He would just kind of walk in at the last second and, and blow up a trade, which is what he did with Carmelo uh, and some other things. But he's usually kind of off to the side. And now between Leon Rose and World Wide West, you got two guys the entire league knows and respects. And now you're starting to hear stuff like this. Zion Williamson – Post game about the garden. Smart thrown in the New Orleans aspect. Do I believe him? Not necessarily. I believe that he enjoys playing at the garden more than New Orleans, I believe. Um, but he said the right thing as a young man. Teak, the league's noticing now. And what the Knicks had to do to see, they always tried to take that fourth step before taking the first step. Mm-hmm. They always tried to get the stars to change the culture and save them. Yeah. Instead, they change the culture, and eventually they will, they will either, you know, get stars or – it's funny. I put this out yesterday, and I got a lot of kickback from Nick fans. They're like, no, no, hold on a second. You don't need to tweet that. We've already got a star <laughs> or a superstar in Randall. Star undeniable. Superstar yeah. debatable. I get debatable, that. Debatable, yeah. I, I got that for sure. In Randall. 
uh, and a blossoming star in Barrett. So you don't always have to recruit stars out there. Yeah. Things are changing for, yeah, uh, that's things are changing for the Knicks. But that's what Big you're time. saying. That's what you're saying, though. The stars, the superstar hasn't gone there recently. They did in the past. Not really. Just Amari. Well, and Carmelo Amari, and, be and the Carmelo, trade. And Carmelo, yeah. But they haven't gone there in the past. And so I'm, I'm, I just don't know why... I don't know, Nick fans thought that this was just going to happen because there were a couple of stars there. At the end of the day, it's, I mean, I hate to say it, it does come down to coaching. And if it's not, if you don't have the superstar like a LeBron or a great system like the Golden State Warriors did, you got to have some really great coaching. It's what we gave Eric Spolstra, even managing the superstars, uh, that, that first trio between LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Um, it was Spolstra's managing of that trio that allowed them to be so successful. Now, great, you had a great players, but you still need a great coach. And I think the Knicks finally got it right mm-hmm. in hiring a coach who was just going to be fundamentally sound. And even guys who maybe on their best days prior to joining this team, weren't good defenders. At least they try, right? And that's half the battle in the NBA, just giving it an effort. And that's why they're keeping games close, even when they lose some of these against some of the better teams. And that's an interesting point because, and I I, I didn't know that they were going to be, I thought they'd beat the Pelicans yesterday, but I, I tweeted yesterday morning. I said, you know, Knicks have won at that point five straight. And, and I pointed out some of the tough losses before the five-game win streak, right? 99-96 at Philly, mm-hmm. 101-100 to overtime against the Sixers. Again, they had two, two in a row. Uh, 102-101, not T-Wolves, but still on the road. Whatever. you got to beat the T-Wolves. Yeah. But they lost by a point. Lost by two at Brooklyn, 114-112. They lost by three, uh, by two at Boston. And then they went on this win streak. Like, those are games. When you lose, that's five games in a row. Not in a row, but five yeah. of eight where they lost by two or three points, last possession kind of thing. And it, it really speaks to their character and their resilience. And, you know, let, yesterday, another example of it. And I, I'm sitting, listen, I'm not going to, I'm going to take a little, I'm going to gloat a little bit here. I am hmm. going to gloat a little bit. Uh, I'm not saying the Knicks are going to upset whomever they play in the first round, although they might steal a game or two. And who knows if they get to the – like if they play the Bucks, if they stay in the sixth seed, I mean, I, listen, I can't I, – I would love for them to, but I'm going <laughs> to give it to the Bucks. If they get up to the five spot, can they mess around? Like you start to talk with Atlanta, like, yeah, absolutely. If they're 4-5 matchup, I would think that they would win that first round matchup. But I'm gloating a little bit because your partner got skewered for that Bosch Randall take two months ago. <laughs> I got roasted, and I sat here. I defended myself a little bit on the show because it was misrepresented, my ultimate point. I got I got Dwayne Wade going on national TV saying, don't embarrass yourself. Uh, I mean, m- people mocking it. And now it's funny. It's hysterical. I'm watching the same show. One, actually, one guy, I want to shout out, one guy of all the shows that actually interpreted what I wrote for what I wrote, not what they thought I wrote, was Jay Williams from ESPN, mm-hmm. all right, with Keyshawn. And he's like, no, he's not saying that he ha- has a better career than Bosch. I, I, didn't, I never said that. Bosch is champions. He got the offensive rebound, kicked it out to Ray Allen, Hall of Famer. I mean, stop. A ton of all-star games. Right now, w- which is what I wrote two months ago, right now, you cannot tell me that Chris Bosch is better than what Randall's doing on a mm-hmm. night-to-night basis because he's not. Yeah, no, he's he not. Wasn't, and he wasn't asked to be that guy too. Not Who was it, Randall or Bosch? Uh, Bosch wasn't asked. No, no, in Toronto he well, was asked Toronto to do that every was. night. That was Toronto. the first eight years, seven years of his career. And again, nobody paid attention to. That's the well, problem. That's I, mean, that, I did. That's the problem. Well, I did. I mean, a lot of na- national viewers. He was really good in Toronto. Oh, man. I agree. I mean, he, but they lost a lot of games. Like people are kind of revising history. Like, oh, he elevated. No, they had three twenty-three win seasons no. and a thirty-win he was, season. He was an all-star. Star, but he, they weren't elevated. Not at all. all. Not at all. They had one good season with him. And, and to be honest with you, yeah. I don't even – who was the coach? I don't even remember who the coach was up there uh, was that, it, that, that oh, year. Geez, who's the coach? Uh, <laughs> I'm serious, though. But I think, was, I think uh, for Randall, it's a combination. It, for Randall, though, just you know, while you think about it, for Randall, I think it's a combination of him finally getting it, like living up to his potential that we all thought he had coming out of Kentucky, but also being paired with the right coach yep. um, who who holds him accountable so that he does have a, the, you know, attention to details and does it each and every night, not just for highlight purposes. So you got to give him credit, but you also got to give credit to the, 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 like the infrastructure around him. No question. And, you know, the, the, Legacy of it's going to seem like an odd connection to make, but in, in some way, like the legacy of Kobe 
is shining through with Randall. Randall has spoken at length about how he watched Kobe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I didn't really even know this until about probably about two months ago, that when the Knicks land in whatever city they're in, no matter what time it is, oh, yeah, I heard this Randall the goes to the gym yeah. where they had their – not the arena because it's not open, yeah. whether it's a high school or a college, JUCO, where they yep. do their one – and he gets shots up. Yeah, and now he brings other guys with him, too. And now Quickly's coming. Now Barrett's coming. I did. I knew that Randall was talented. I did mm. not know that he was a leader, okay? I definitely did not know that. I did not know that he had this incredible work ethic. And I didn't know that he had such a disdain for losing. <laughs> like, I really didn't. Like, I thought he was – for a little bit, Not I mean this year. But even last year when he was with the Knicks, I thought – he was kind of a, a hollow – I knew he was talented, but I think he was a bit of a hollow numbers guy who if he got 20 and 10 and they lost, he was relatively unaffected. Yeah, he was He's happy. the exact opposite. Yeah. He is a dog, man. Yeah. Julius Randle wants to well, win. Well, that's, that's what happens when you find success, when you start to feel Love some it. success. The good ones take it and run with it. The average ones, they're just kind of okay with it. Yep, nice little fun season at the Garden so far. Let's see where it takes. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.